Welcome to the Junk Room, everybody. Junk Man back again. You're here to talk Star Wars with you. What are we going to talk about today? Five things I love about The Last Jedi. I mean, who doesn't love The Last Jedi, right? Oh, yeah, those guys. But some of us love The Last Jedi, and here's five things I really loved about The Last Jedi. Number five, and this might surprise some of you, Ray's parents being nobody. Ray being a nobody. For over two years, I bitched and complained and cried on Twitter how Ray was a Skywalker. She had to be a Skywalker. She has to carry on the Skywalker family. Without Ray, there's no Skywalker family. She is a Skywalker. She is a Skywalker. She is a Skywalker. I tweeted it every day, and I was damn sure of it. But she's not. She's nobody. And you think I would be upset and pissed about this? I love it. I love that she's a nobody. It makes her character so much better. Now, I know you're disagreeing with me out there, but it's true. It makes her a better character. The Force is speaking with her. A nobody. That gives hope to everybody else out there. A Jedi doesn't need to be somebody in a family. I mean, look back at the prequels. Let's go back. The Jedi didn't raise Jedis because their parents were a good Jedis. In fact, the Jedi was forbidden to have children. So you don't need any good bloodline to be a great Jedi. There's millions of great Jedis out there that have no Jedi bloodline. The Force just calls to you. And that gets me started on another thing that I hear a lot of haters hate about Rey being trained. Where does it say in the Star Wars movie that you have to be trained to be good with the Force? Maybe I missed that episode. Maybe it's an episode between Star Wars and A New Hope. I'm not sure, but from what I know of the Force, the Force calls to you. It controls you. Sure, to be a Jedi, you need training. But training just to use the Force? No, you don't have to. The Force works through you. I could have been somebody instead of a bum. Number four of the things I love about The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. You gave me the Luke Skywalker I never knew I wanted. Sure, he could have went the simple route and gave us another version of Obi-Wan or another version of Yoda. Something we've seen before. But nope, you give us a broody, dark Luke Skywalker. One that's made bad choices. And he blames himself for these choices. And he thinks he's doing worse by sticking around. He thinks he's actually doing the best he can by going away. I love this Luke Skywalker. I love that he was conflicted. I'm... I love that he made mistakes in the past. And don't get me started on this whole, oh, he was going to try to kill Kylo Ren, or Ben Solo, whatever one you want to call him. It was a three, four second thought. Yeah, the guy that thought about killing Darth Vader, although he felt a conflict in him, he had a thought to kill Kylo, like he had a thought to kill Vader. There's a lot, a lot of people that don't like Luke Skywalker's character at like, well, he went around for weeks and months planning to kill Ben Solo. No, it was a few seconds of thought he had, and it made a huge mistake in his life. And it was a huge mistake. And Luke will tell you that. I love Luke Skywalker's character in this film. Number three, Poe Dabron is always wrong. I loved it. I don't know about you, but I've seen so many movies in my life that for most times, I know the beat's coming. And the whole time watching this movie, I said, okay, I know what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna be against Poe. He's gonna have his plan. He's gonna do it. It's going to work out, and they're all going to say, Oh, we should have listened to you, Poe. Sorry, we love you. But nope, every decision he made was wrong, and I love that because it was different. And that kind of leads me into number two, that this movie is different. This movie didn't go down any path I thought it would. Almost every thought in my head while watching this movie about thought was going to happen didn't happen, and I love that. I've been, growing, I've been watching Star Wars since I was five years old. It's very hard to take me down a path I didn't see coming. The Ray parent thing, I thought for sure she was a Skywalker. Snoke, I thought he'd at least be around for the for episode nine. Poe, I thought Poe was gonna be right about everything. DJ, don't like DJ too much, but I thought that's yeah, gonna be the guy they were looking for after all. It wasn't. Even back to Luke Skywalker, there's a scene where you see the X Wing in the ocean, and I thought, Okay, we know how he's going to get back to the heroes. He's going to show up in his X-Wing. He force lifts out of the ocean. Nope, he doesn't do that. Everything in this movie that I thought was going to happen while watching it in the theater didn't happen. And that's very rare for me when I go see a movie. And I really love that about this film. 
I didn't see anything coming. And number one, the death of Snoke. I love this. Cause again, I didn't see it coming, and I'm kind of I'm glad Snoke is gone. I don't need Snoke in episode nine. I've seen that story with the Emperor. I don't need him around. He wasn't that good of a character. And I've heard people say, well, why'd he go out like that? How else you want him to go out? And it fits with Star Wars. Why did Snoke die so easily? He was overconfident. He thought Kylo Ren was going to take the saber and slay down his enemy, Rey. But, his in but Kylo's enemy was Snoke. And Snoke, again, overconfidence, did not see this coming. And that's a theme of Star Wars. In the prequel, the Jedi did not see Darth Sidious taking over because they were so confident about everything. Even in Return of the Jedi, the Emperor is so confident that Luke's going to join him and kill Darth Vader that it leads to his downfall. People being overconfident is a theme in all the Star Wars movies. And they kept this theme going, and I didn't expect it. And also, I, I'm going to throw in the battle scene with his guards. I love this. I know it's not the standard lightsaber scene that I was hoping for, but I still loved it. It was some great action. Could have done well some of the slow motion because it seems a little overdone in movies today. But overall, I love this. But anyway, that's five things I loved about The Last Jedi. Check out my other video, Five Things I Hated About The Last Jedi. I kind of going to do these separate videos. I was going to do one big video, but I kind of want to see what gets more views. One with a title that says, I hate The Last Jedi, or a title that says, things I love about The Last Jedi. So I'm kind of curious. And if you got the Stardust app, please look for me on there as Star Wars Junk. I'm going to just randomly pick a DVD out of my collection and talk about it. I think you only record up to like, I don't know, 30, 60 seconds, something like that. I've got about four of them up so far. Unlike some YouTubers you're going to see out there that's getting paid to tell you to get Stardust app. I'm not getting paid, but Stardust, if you want to pay me, junk at starwarsjunk.net you can email me right there i'll give you my paypal but it's stardust it's a stardust app i'll put a logo somewhere right there look for me on there i'm going to review like i said i'm just going to walk over to my dvd cabinet and as always please support us on patreon if you're already a supporter you could get you could get my new podcast that takes place in 1978 you could have it already if you're coming for everybody very soon and as always, if you want shirts or just check out the latest on Star Wars, Karen Toys, whatever, go to StarWarsJunk.net. Thank you for watching. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.